Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. Uh, welcome again to our series here. I'm going through the Bible, and uh, today we're going to be looking at the Book of Judges. Okay, so open your Bible and uh, turn to the Book of Judges in the Old Testament, chapter two, uh, verses eighteen to nineteen. That's in the, in the Book of Judges, chapter two. Verses 18 to 19. And here we read. Whenever the Lord raised up a judge over Israel, he was with that judge and rescued the people from their enemies throughout the judge's lifetime. For the Lord took pity on his people who were burdened by oppression and suffering. But when the judge died, the people returned to their corrupt ways, behaving worse than those who had lived before them. They went after other gods, serving and worshipping them, and they refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn ways. God bless reading of his word. Idolatry and evil. So the background here is that we have, we're not sure who wrote um, this book, uh, the book of Judges. It's possibly Samuel. It's written around about probably 1000 BC. Um, the book of Judges covers the Old Testament time from the death of Joshua, right? Moses' successor uh, to the first Hebrew kings. And Joshua. So what happens is Joshua, the former Israel leader, dies and God provides so-called judges uh, for the Israelites. So what are judges? Judges are leaders in the uh, tribes of Israel and they're chosen by God um, uh, to uh, deliver the, the people, the Israelites, from the enemies. Um, they're a bit more like, um, not like judges, what we think like today, but more like military leaders, right? Like com military commanders. And um, so um, uh, in, 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 this is an example of a, um, uh, a judge here and um, God uh, revealing himself uh, through God's word. Um, when you think of judges, uh, two you may come across or think what we heard about is Gideon and Samson. Uh, Samson are probably the most familiar ones. Um, what's happening here is that there's um, the judges have to deal with so-called Baal worship, right? Baal is a Canaanite god, right? Small d, uh, basically an idol, right? Uh, so um, such such uh, um, forms of idol worship are an act of evil in God's view. And uh, why? Because worshiping anything else than God himself is idolatry, right? And that's a big thing. So the topic here is um, the worship of anything but God, namely our Lord Jesus Christ as God in the flesh. And that is consistent in the Old Testament and New Testament is what we're dealing uh, here um, uh, today. Um, we want to talk about. So the goal is to understand um, the meaning of turning away from God to idols and doing evil uh, as a result, as an outcome. That is the same, it was the same then, and it's the same today, now. So in verse 20, um, we read that there is uh, the Lord's um, anger burns against Israel for worshiping false deities. So we're reading, uh, mo moving a little bit further here in this passage. And um, so we read in Judges 2, 20 to 22. So the Lord burned with anger against Israel. He said, because these people have violated my covenant, which I made with their ancestors and have ignored my commands, I will no longer drive out the nations that Joshua left unconquered when he died. I did this to test Israel to see whether or not they would follow the ways of the Lord as their ancestors did. So God bless me with his word. So basically, um, uh, God is testing the people in the sense that he's um, uh, testing and uh, searching their hearts 
um, to see if they are their hearts are fully bent towards him. And that's what's happening here. So the principle is basically this. So when people refuse to turn back to God, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a biblical principle. It applies then and now. Very big one here. Big one. So when people refuse to turn back to God, um, they, they give in to sin. They succumb to sin and evil. So there's a connection there between sin and evil um, as part of idolatry. Okay, so as we see here, idolatry relates directly um, to evil, right? It's a satanic realm, and that's just something we just don't want to be involved in and be part of. So what does this mean today for you and me and any follower of Jesus? It means that idolatry is a form of evil. As we just read, it's rebellion against God, and it's a form of blatant disobedience. And so there are consequences of disobeying God. And um, this is a big one again here, right? As a result of idolatry, uh, God says, right, in Judges 2, 21, 22, I will no longer drive out the nations that Joshua left unconquered when he died. I did this to test Israel to see whether or not they would follow the ways of the Lord as their ancestors did. So we just, God bless you, so we just read this passage. So what happens here again is that God, when people turn away from God and turn to idols and evil, um, God basically um, lets people do their own thing. And uh, they, people may think they're doing um, things in their own strength, but God... Uh, does uh, leave people to their own devices. So in this case, God tests people right, to see um, if, if they will you know, keep his covenant. However, they transgress his covenant and God does not drive out the pagan uh, nations there before them. In other words, they're left on their own. So when we consider all this also, what does it mean? So. There are benefits too, right? To turn away from idols um, and obeying God. Again, think about idols. Idols can be anything. Um, the striving for wealth, fame, fortune, money, uh, relationships, influence, um, objects. Um, basically, uh, anything that um, replaces God in people's hearts. So that anything that replaces Jesus Christ in uh, people's hearts. And so here's a wonderful uh, passage here for, uh, to consider what that means um, that, uh, of the benefits as we turn away from idols, as we read in the book of Psalms. So turn with me, if, if you will, to the book of Psalms, um, Psalm 115. That's Psalm 115, verses 4 to 8. So Psalm 115, verses 4 to to aid. There we read. Their idols are merely things of silver and gold, shaped by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, and eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, and mouths but cannot breathe. They have hands but cannot feel, and feet but cannot walk, and throats but cannot make a sound. And those who make idols are just like them, as are all who trust in them. God bless you in his word. So that is something um, really our call. Uh, there's a real benefit from turning away from idolatry because people are uh, deceived, right? Satan, the devil, has a foothold in people's hearts. And um, yeah, so that's something to consider um, that's something we just don't want to do, right? And we pray that others do turn away from idols. So today, again, as I said, there are idols, and Jesus warns us of this. This is a wonderful and important passage, too. In Matthew 6, 24, Jesus says, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. You cannot serve God 
and be enslaved to money. God bless you in reading of this word. So ultimately, in the end, it is only in and through Jesus Christ um, that he overcomes um, idolatry, sin, Satan, evil, and death, and everything else uh, that is not of God. So that's something we want to understand. And um, only Jesus was able to do that. And uh, as we close here with the verse here, we understand uh, uh, how God has revealed himself in, in and through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ and tells us in his word in the Bible in Matthew 1, 21. Matthew chapter 1, 21. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. God bless me of his word. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.